Bonjour, mes amis, et bienvenue en pendu dans le cercle de lune. Hello, friends. If this is your first time here, welcome. Thank you for coming. I'm pleased to meet you. If you've been here before, thank you for returning. I'm truly honored. Friends, if you are a returning visitor, you surely know from my attempt at a French introduction that this is my series in which I use Théo de Marseille, Théo de Marseille adjacent, and antique Italian decks to help me get a more concise message from my larger weekly, starting now, thought-based tarot spread. Because if you've been following me, you know that this lunar cycle, I began my year-long deep dive into the Thoth system. And I'm starting with the Harris Crowley deck. I have two copies, two versions that I'm using. And the video this week I entitled Perspective. And just in case you have not seen that video, if you haven't seen this week's larger spread, I highly recommend going to see that because then you will have a foundation for the question and then the subsequent answer that we're going to get from my Théodore Marseille adjacent deck that I'm using this week. So I'll put a card up here for you to hop on over, take a look at that, and come back. Now, just in case, it is a large video, and you may have seen it in bits and chunks, and so maybe just a quick reminder of what it was you saw could be helpful. So you remember probably that we had the hermit at the top and we had the hanged man at the bottom, and it's because of the central, I'm sorry, at the top and the bottom of the central set of six cards. And it's that union that made me think of perspective. Now we have the hermit in all of his Crowley sexual magic, viewing the Orphic egg and the possibilities for creation and going it alone, taking a step back from society. We have at the bottom, the hanged man, again, doing it alone, um, so lowering himself, herself, themselves into the water to um, sacrifice themselves and particularly sacrifice the past in order to be ready for the next stage of evolution. And we had helper cards around that. We had um, some powerful al alchemy, right? We had alchemy, um, fire in water, in the water part of the elemental section of the spread. Now we have the Magician. We had a whole slew of Major Arcana cards, right? And we had great advice that was both to um, recognize that we are not at the end. We want to keep going and we want to have uh, both patience and... Uh, what do we call that? When we, ha we do the same thing over and over and over without um, stopping, without pause, without change. Um, Persistence. Yeah, we want persistence and uh, regularity to keep going, keep taking, putting one foot in front of the other, and things will go turn out well. There might be some glitches on the way, but things will turn out well if we just keep going, right? That was the whole message from this perspective video. Perspective video. Yeah, that was correct English, I think, right? If it wasn't, let me know in the comments below. So, that was the message. That was the idea for how we can live life more intentionally in the coming week. And so, like I said, it's a big, big spread. So I want a concise, concise message. And so I asked a very particular deck the question. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the question all nice and typed out, and then I'll show you the spread, and then we'll dive into reading it together. Are you ready? I hope you are. Come along with me. So what was your perspective on that grouping of cards? Do you recognize this deck? I've used this deck before. Do you recognize the Oracle I paired with it? I changed out Oracle decks because the Oracle deck that I have been using for the last few videos, which I intentionally purchased and selected to use with antique decks or Terre de Marseille reproductions, um, just did not seem to fit with this grouping, with this deck. This is a very modern reinterpretation of the Tarot de Marseille. You've noticed that, right? 
And I've used that deck before. It's called the Talisman Tarot. And just in case you're curious about that deck, I'll put a link in the description box below so you can hop on over and perhaps purchase this deck. It's a great deck. The cardstock is a little bit stiff. Uh, this I love the backs for the cards. And I also love the way that this deck was drawn. Yeah, there's a little bit of, feels like touch art, and there, there are a couple of different styles of painting and art used on in this deck. I just think it's lovely um, and very modern looking, but still it has that sense of the classic Tarot de Marseille, what I would consider a really traditional deck. Wait, Smith, not so traditional. It's only been a little over a hundred years that we've had it around. Marseille, we've had since the 1700s and before. Now, there are some very similar decks um, even much earlier than that. The Budapest, for example, I think it was from the late 1400s to early 1500s. It looks like a little Terre de Marseille, mostly, I think. And anyways, so that's what I think of when I think of a traditional tarot deck. And so this reminds me of a very traditional deck. Um, but did you also notice the Oracle card there stuck at the end? Um, that's from a deck by Colette Baron Reed. And I was trying to think of what, of which of my Oracle decks that I still have at home that I thought would pair well with this deck. And suddenly this deck came to mind. The Animal Spirit deck came to mind. And I'm actually glad I decided to use it. It's a, an interesting uh, tag to this spread. But the main spread that you saw, what did you think? Did you think, oh my God, that boy has gone crazy? Well, let me tell you what the original spread was. Okay, so I, you know I use a three card spread, always. So I laid out the three cards. The three cards from left to right were the Six of Wands, the th card 13, the card 13, card 13, and then the Queen of Swords. And I could have left it at that. But, you know, the Queen of Swords is looking off to the side, off, out of the spread, and so curiosity got the better of me, and I thought, okay, what is she looking at? What's on her mind? And so I pulled one more card, and I got the Ten of Cups. And then I thought, well, then, which Oracle deck should I pair with this? And so I landed on the, um, what do we call it? The Animal Spirit Tarot uh, Oracle by Colette Baron reed and uh, pulled a card for that, was happy with the result. And then I laid it, I s just laid it there and I s looked at it and I looked at it. I put, walked away and I came back and I looked at it and I thought, okay. But something was itching at me. Something was itching at me. Um, I, and I don't know if you can predict what was itching at me already, but something was, was nagging, was poking at me, was nagging at me. And I didn't know what it was. And then after about half a day, I went back and looked at it and I noticed, I realized that, yeah, the Queen of Swords was looking off one way and the card 13, the figure on card 13 was looking off the other way. They both have um, something that they're looking at, but they're back to back. And it felt like that there, it felt like there was a, a gap, a hole. It felt like there was something missing in between the two of them. And that's the first time I've ever thought that or felt that. And I thought, well, what am I supposed to do about that? Do I just leave it like a, this feeling of unfilled void? Or do I shuffle the cards and pull a new one? And that's what I ended up trying to do. I thought, okay, so I'll shuffle the cards. I'll pull one. If it doesn't make sense, I'll just toss it out. I'll toss it away. So I shuffled the cards. I laid it out. And then you saw that card that was out of position kind of stuck in below the four cards, which were the original cards laid for the spread, was the Queen of Coins. And I had really been hoping for a, a trump or something that was facing forward. You know, so that then there would be the group of people, uh, the queen looking one way, card 13, the skeleton looking the other way, and then I'd have a really strong central image here. But instead, what I got was another queen. That's not a bad thing, but I did get another queen of coins, also looking the same way as the queen of swords. 
So now we've got two queens looking at the Ten of Cups, and then card 13 looking at the Six of Wands. And I was thinking, what do, I, do I toss it? Do I keep it? Do I pull another card to see what's behind? And I thought, no, I'll just stop here. And I thought, I pulled the card. We're going to read with it. Let's see what happens. So friends, that's where we are. We're at the let's see what happens stage of my life. So, <laughs> and my career as a tarot, tarot reader. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull, we're going to start with card 13 looking at the six of wands. And then we'll look at, look at the queen of swords looking at the 10 of cups. And then we'll look at the queen of coins because she was the last to the party. Okay, so we're, let's start off with the card. I keep saying the, with card 13. Here the card 13 is again. Very simple, lovely redrawing of card 13, the nameless card. Now, we get indications of um, plants and maybe, maybe, is there a head down there? It's really hard to tell what's down there in the ground, but there are things down there in the ground. I love the red blade of the scythe. I love the rudimentary uh, rough feeling that the skeleton gives us. So what is card 13? You're, gonna, you're saying, it's death, just say it, it's death. Well, yeah, it is death, but it's also change. It's ending of cycles. It's a transformation, and it can be a profound transformation as well. Transformation from, for example, a chrysalis to a butterfly. That could be indicated here. It could also be a suggestion to eliminate that which has blocked us. Now, ending illusions. Eradication of the old to make way for the new. Getting, ridding, getting rid of the old to make way for the new, which is interesting because that was part of the larger spread for this week, was in the unconscious area the portion, or the below the surface portion of the six card spread in the center. There were indications that we want to remove, to get rid of the old for the new to grow. And so having this card made, makes perfect sense. Keeping only the essential, harvesting, tossing out the chaff, and keeping the grain, right? And I think that's the direction we want to go with, with this card being that harvesting of what we, what is good, what is beneficial, getting rid of the chaff, getting rid of the shells, getting rid of the old, and having space for the new to grow. Harvesting but also cutting off those things which are illusory, illusionary. And that's different from having a vision, a daydream, or a, 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 what? a flash of insight. The illusions, those ego-based, falsely created images that we have for ourselves that are either from our own sense of, I want to be better than somebody else, or they're things that we were taught that we should want, right? Those illusions of grandeur for one. Now we can, be, we can still grow to be grand people and not have those illusions of grandeur, right? So what this card is facing is the Six of Wands. What is the Six of Wands, besides being a beautiful card? I love the colors. Love the reds and blues and blacks and grays here. Just a gorgeous card. This entire deck is fabulous. Six of Wands. Six, the beauty. Taking pleasure of doing stuff. Taking pleasure in our actions. Doing what we love. Vitality. Feeling our inner power. Our sexual and our libido and all of that inner life force and finding a unique expression, our own personal unique expression of that life force is here in this card. So, I think what this is saying, now this is the way it looked on the table for you, I would imagine, right? This is saying, for is indicating for us, one side is to get rid of the old, to Harvest that which is good, which has grown, get rid of the, the shells, keep the seeds, and make room for the Six of Wands to grow. 
make room for us to do what we love, to enjoy doing what we do, and to express ourselves in our unique way. Which is also part of the hermit card from this week's larger spread. Yeah? Doing the internal work of self-exploration and self-inquiry to create something new in the world. So, these two cards together, and I like this, were very indicative of this week's spread. So do this. And on the other side, we had the Queen of Swords. The Queen of Swords is my favorite queen in all decks. One of my favorite cards, but also my favorite queen in all, de in all decks. Because of who the Queen of Swords is. The Queen of Swords is the independent thinker, right? Complexity, perspective, perspective, right? The title of the video was Perspective. Um, also clear-mindedness. The queen uses her powerful intellect um, for the gathering of, for the discovering of, and creation of useful and effective ideas. Now, the queen isn't one to go off on flights of whimsical daydreaming, but that's for one of the other court cards. The Queen of Swords is very practical, effective, idea woman, man, non-binary person. She can be stubborn, sure, she can be stubborn and defend herself. She, she, can, she gets an idea and she can be very defensive of the idea she has, certainly. And she says what she wants to say. She doesn't worry about other people's feelings or are they, how are they going to feel if I say what I think. She doesn't do any of that crap. She's new to, but she's new, open to new ideas. She is open to new ideas. She'll say what she thinks is right and she'll, she's willing to listen, right? The swords are not only about thinking or seeing, they're also about listening. It's all that fifth chakra stuff and a little bit of the sixth chakra. So that's her. And so what does she have on her mind? She has on her mind something that I was a little bit surprised about, it was the 10 of cups, right? What is the 10 of cups? Finding peace, feeling complete. That's the direction she wants to move in. She wants to prepare for the next steps because she knows that this is not the end. She, he, they know that this is not the end. This is one step on the longer journey. Even though this is the 10, tens move right back up to the ace, right? So there's an evolution in the emotional life. The tens are the emotional life, right? So there's an evolution now to the next stage, the next level. Maybe to universal love. Maybe to Christ-like love, Buddha-like love, Bodhisattva-like love, universal love, and also the ability to take leadership in a compassionate, open, loving, having enough emotion to be able to share and support those around us kind of leadership, which is not something that the Queen of Swords is naturally adept at. Right? She'll be, she can lead, but not in the way of the Ten of Cups normally. So that's the direction she wants to move in. That's what she's got on her mind. It's, okay, so I got my brain all together. Now let's see if I can join with my heart and move forward with maybe a little bit of heart-mind coherence, if that makes sense, and lead from that, from that foundation, from that framework, from that basis. So on one side, we've got the clearing away, we've got the transformation that's available for us and in, to make space for us to enjoy doing what we do, loving doing what we're doing, and finding our unique expression of our own per personal, vital, energetic, creative, libido, sexual drive, all of that. And on the other side, we've got this really smart, independent person who is now realizing that the next stage of their evolution is to join with the heart and become a, to step into leadership from the heart with all of that 
background and basis of the Queen of Swords. So, we do this in the center though, right? We do this in the center, we had this one come up. The Queen of Coins. So, I think this is the one who is doing this. This is the one who is join, is coming to bring both the card 13 and the Queen of Swords, both carrying weapons, right? We, we do notice that, yeah? Both the card 13 figure and the Queen of Swords, they both have weapons in their hands. And in comes, no, in comes is not the correct way to put this. The thing that, the, the entity that is doing both of those actions is the Queen of Coins. The lovely card, right? You see the Queen holding up a coin or maybe even the world in front of his, her, their faces. And the Queen of Coins is the Queen of Practicality enjoying the creature comforts, enjoying that which he, she, they have around them, um, feeling financially secure, always able to make do with whatever they have available. They're sober, they're realistic, practical, pragmatic. And they expend their energy to maintain, but also to innovate. They're not stuck in their patterns, they create something new. They have the courage to look themselves in the face, to see who they are, and from that, see how they can create and develop next. They realize that their resources are the most vital, the most alive, when they are in a flowing cycle circuit of economic exchange material exchange, work exchange. We work for each other, we exchange goods, we exchange money, we, ex we, we participate in an ecosystem of exchange and that's what she realizes, knows and does particularly well. And when things are a little bit shy, as in she doesn't have a lot of stuff around, she can make do. When she does have a lot of stuff around, she doesn't feel guilty, she feels joyful about it. She takes pleasure in it. And she feels secure. And from that, she can do the work of the car, of card 13, clearing stuff away, and do the work of the brilliant, witty, clever Queen of Swords who is learning to connect with the heart. And then the cool thing is that with the addition of this figure, we got all of the suits. Now, we've got the Six of Wands, Wands, the Queen of Swords, Swords, the Ten of Cups, Cups, and now the Queen of Coins, Coins. We got all of that and one major completes the whole spread. Nothing is left out. We got court cards, we got minor cards, we got it all. Pretty cool, huh? So now are you glad that I drew this card? Were you glad at, for, at the beginning? Oh, that's good, that's good too. So we have one more card to look at and that is our Oracle card, which is the Turkey Spirit. You see this beautiful turkey and there, one thing I'm a little bit disappointed about this card being this meaning is that it really does sound like North American Thanksgiving. And Thanksgiving for the turkey is not such a wonderful day, right? But this is turkey spirit, and this is the potential for manifesting a rich reality. So the advice is to, how do we do that? The advice is generosity. Celebration of abundance. Like, like what she would naturally do, right? Give freely. Again, we have an economy, uh, an ecosystem of exchange here. Give freely. Of what? Everything. 
money, guidance, listening to other people, kindness. Give with gratitude and grace. Be thankful for giving. Do you understand that? Does that make sense to you? Be thankful for giving and graceful in the giving of what we have rather than lording it over the others. Be grateful for the opportunity to give and be graceful in that action from a place of love and compassion. And then expect, expect to receive because, because we're entering into that cycle that Again, the economy or the um, ecosystem of exchange, we give and we receive. Just like card 13 clears away space so that new things can grow, we give in the way that, you know, in a way to make space for ourselves to receive. Now, Okay, this isn't this. This is not the thing, right? Okay, I'll give this to you because I want something else. That's not what we're talking about at all. Yeah? Giving in that way is not opening yourself up to receiving. It's begrudgingly getting rid of something because you hope that something better will come along. That's not the, that's not the idea behind that card. The idea behind that card is, I'm so grateful for the opportunity to be able to share what I have with you. Because you are deserving and you are an equal co-creating expression of the divine. And for me to be able to offer what I have to another expression of the divine is grace in and of itself. And I know that in giving away does not deprive me because I am full and I will be fuller. Does that make sense? So that's the advice for this week's spread. Gratitude, giving, grace, thanksgiving and abundance. And from that basis, we can do everything else that, we, that was suggested in this spread and in the larger spread from this week. I hope that makes sense to you. It makes sense to me. If it does not make sense to you, let me know in the comments below. If it does make sense to you, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. I really, really, really would. And friends, if, thank you for joining me this far on this journey through this mad, wild ride of a spread that I threw out on the floor. Um, if you are still here and you have already hit that thumbs up button, I am deeply grateful for you because you're sharing that energy uplifts the channel and helps me and the channel as a whole. So thank you very much for doing that. Um, thank you very much for subscribing too. I'm so grateful for all the subscribers that are here with us on this channel. It's a, you are all a blessing and you're why I'm here. Now, um, and if you want a private reading from me, I do that. Some of you have gotten them from me. So my email address is below, thehangedmaninthemoon at gmail.com. Shoot me an email, we'll get you a reading. Or you can type in a comment in the box below. I'd like a reading from you and we'll work it out together. Okay? So friends, thank you very much. Thank you truly. From And now, just as always, I wish you love, joy, well-being, and pure awareness. Thank you. Mm -hmm.